ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Mmm, you're going to love the big exciting news today. Now there are two brand new Betty Crocker cake mixes. There's chocolate malt and peanut delight. I'll bet you can hardly wait to try them, and I wouldn't blame you. They're just so good. Today, let me tell you about the chocolate malt. It's a wonderful new way to enjoy an old flavor that's a favorite with so many of us. There's honest-to-goodness delicious malted milk right in the mix. And, of course, there are all the other fine-quality ingredients you choose yourself, like famous soft-as-silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. And because it is a Betty Crocker cake mix... Mom knows it's the easiest way ever to bake a perfect cake. So next time Mom goes shopping, be sure to remind her to get that brand new delicious treat. Betty Crocker's Chocolate Malt Cake Mix. You'll love it. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hey, oh, Silver. Hooray! With a saddlebag full of silver from a secret mine owned by the Lone Ranger and his nephew, Dan Reed, the masked man and Tonto rode to the home of a trusted friend, a banker who lived just outside the town of Border City. Oh, 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 oh. It was late at night when they drew rein and dismounted near the stable behind the banker's home. The Lone Ranger looked toward a lighted window and said, That's the window of George Wilson's study. He must still be up. Mm, that's good. I'll take the saddlebag and go to the house. Better stay with Scout and Silver, Tonto. Let me wait here. Tonto watched his masked friend walk to the house about 50 feet away and tap on the French door. The door was opened. The Lone Ranger stepped inside. Then the door was closed and the drapery drawn across it. At that moment, a man spoke behind Tonto's back. Stand still, Injun. Uh-huh. Don't make a noise. You're covered. Hold your hands high while we take away your fighting tools. There. Now turn around. Oh, where you come from? We were around the side of the stable. Who are you? Oh, me, Tonto. Me friend of Banker Wilson. You may be guards, huh? Guards? <laughs> well, I reckon we're something of the sort. Who's the man who was with you? Him, friend of Wilson. Him, Lone Ranger. Why? No. Cap, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, that checks. The mask, the white horse. That's something we should tell the boss. Who you mean, boss? You not work for Wilson? Mace, you talk too much. What'll we do? We'll tie and gag the engine. Oh, you're not. Oh, no. Hey, you hit him hard, Trip. Just knocked him out. Never yet killed a man with a gun barrel. Now tie and gag him. We'll leave him here and report to Ringo. Ringo was expecting George Wilson would call in another federal man or a special investigator like he did before. Yeah, that's why he had us watching the house. But he never figured Wilson would get the help of the Lone Ranger. wonder what Ringo will do about this. I don't know, but I bet he'll do plenty. Meanwhile, inside the banker's house, George Wilson locked the Lone Ranger's silver in a small safe, and the masked man pocketed paper money and coins of equal value. Thanks for the exchange, George. I've been proud to serve as your secret banker, but I'm afraid this is the last time. I heard that a man named Ringo... Ringo, that crook. I intended to tell you about him. Is he the man who owned the cafe when I was here six months ago? Yes, he still owns the cafe. But now he also owns practically everything else in town. How did he expand so fast? By spending unlimited money. Do you uh, know how he got the money? Yes, I do. He's been smuggling stolen weapons to renegade armies across the border. Stolen weapons, huh? That's right. Mm. Stolen from the army. Army supply trains all over the West have been attacked, robbed, and troops massacred. By devious routes, the stolen arms and ammunition find their way here to Border City. And you know how close we are to the international boundary. I have heard that some of the buildings here in town are within a couple of hundred feet of the border. That's true. And one of those buildings is Ringo's Cafe. 
As I was telling you, with plenty of money to spend, Ringo got his own men elected to public offices. Then, with law distorted in his favor, he gained control of most of the business property. And the townsmen let him get away with it? <laughs> Some who opposed him disappeared. Others were found mysteriously killed. Still others, especially men with families, moved away. Hmm. Now, Border City is filled with outlaws of every type. They've come from all over, and they take orders from Ringo. Uh, he must have spent years building his organization secretly before he moved into the open. George, are you sure of your facts? Certain. My information came from reliable sources. Many of the men who gave it to me uh, are now dead. Ringo knows I'm trying to fight him. <laughs> he offered to buy me out. What did he say when you turned him down? He merely smiled. I don't know what his next move will be, but I know he'll strike and strike hard. Is the federal government helpless? Agents have tried to get evidence against Ringo and failed. Obviously, anything that might incriminate him is well concealed. I think... What's that? A horse outside the door. Sounds like silver. I slide back the drape. You'll be able to see through the glass. It is silver. I'll open the door. What is it, silver? What's wrong? running toward the stable. Something's wrong there. I'll follow him. Yeah, I'll go with you. Following Silver, the Lone Ranger and George Wilson quickly reached the place beside the stable, where Tonto, tied and gagged, lay on the ground. When freed, Tonto said, A two fella ask about Mask Man. Me say him Lone Ranger, and then plenty surprised. Why'd they knock you out? Well, them say, and try and gag me, leave me here while them go and tell boss about Lone Ranger. Me cry fight. You get in head knocked out. Did those men name their boss? No. Undoubtedly Ringo. He probably got a report on everyone who visited me. And now that he knows you're here, he'll act fast. We'll act faster. I'll call on Ringo tonight. No, no. It would be suicide for you to go to his place. I'll reduce the risk by wearing a disguise. Alone in Wilson's home, the Lone Ranger took from his pocket a handbill, describing an outlaw known as Patch, whom he and Tonto had captured. Darkening his skin, he removed his mask, and fixed a black patch over one eye. Then, after changing to dark clothes borrowed from the banker, he fitted the description of the outlaw. He borrowed Tonto's gun belt, slipped an old pistol into the holster, and set out for Ringo's Cafe. Joe Ringo, a big man with black hair and a black mustache, sat at his favorite table near the door, where he could see everyone who entered his cafe. With him sat Tripp and Mace, the men who had knocked out Tonto. After listening to their report, Ringo sat deep in thought. I figured Wilson might try to fight me by sending for more federal agents. But the Lone Ranger, hmm. he's not restricted by legal technicalities. The oh, boys. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Ringo. I've decided on our next move. Someone has to kill the Lone Ranger. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Full back Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios. Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. For a moment, Tripp and Mace were somewhat awestruck at Ringo's decision to kill the Lone Ranger. Then a man, a short distance away, suddenly raised his voice in anger to the waiter. Don't tell me I can't sit at this table. I'll sit anywhere I want. But, mister... Mr. Ringo doesn't like to have one man hold down a big table. I don't care what Mr. Ringo likes. He wants me to move, tell him to move me. Everyone's attention was focused on the tall stranger with the eye patch, but no one suspected he was the Lone Ranger. 
Ringo spoke to Mace and Tripp. Who's the man with the eye patch? I don't know, Mr. Ringo. He came in a few minutes ago. Bring him to me. I want to talk to him. Good night, Mr. Ringo. Come on, Tripp. Ringo will teach that patch eye gent who runs things around here. Yeah, he sure will. Well, what do you two want? Stranger, Mr. Ringo wants to talk to you. He's at that table over yonder. He wants to talk to me. Time to come here. He told us to bring you to him. Oh? Well, come on, move. Take your hand off my arm. You're coming with us. Grab me. Gentlemen, I don't like to be grabbed. The Lone Ranger leaped to his feet. Like that. Oh. He wrenched free of the outlaw's grip and drove a fist to Mace's chin. Quip swung hard. Miss. I take it. Ah. A straight jam to the stomach. Then both men, hurt and enraged, tried to overwhelm the stranger. I'll show you. I'll smash every bone in your body. The Lone Ranger dodged, ducked, and sidestepped, avoiding clumsy swings while stabbing Ringo's men repeatedly with clean, short blows. His head, hand, and footwork brought murmurs of admiration from the crowd. Even Ringo smiled. Trip stumbled back and smashed into a table. While Mace threw himself at the tall stranger. I'll nail you yet! Right. For the Lone Ranger, the fight was but a means to an end. Sparring defensively, he backed close to Ringo's table. As if by accident, a folded sheet of paper slipped from his pocket and fluttered to the floor at Ringo's feet. Ringo picked it up. This has gone far enough. It's time you went to sleep. And here's your nightcap. While the Lone Ranger stood looking at the two men sprawled unconscious on the floor, Ringo arose and said, Stranger, I still want to talk to you. My name is Ringo. You'd have less broken furniture if you'd spoken to me in the first place, instead of sending those muscle-bound grizzlies to my table. Well, the furniture can be replaced. So can the uh, muscle-bound grizzlies. Now, boys, take Mason Tripp into the back room till they wake up. Yes, Mr. Ringo. All right, boys. Will you step into my office? I came here to eat. I've traveled a long way and I'm hungry. You'll be my guest. I'll have food brought to the office. I'd like to talk to you. Suits me. The first step of his plan having been successful, the Lone Ranger followed Ringo into a beautifully furnished office and sat down. He expected an invitation to join the gang and little suspected what Ringo really had in mind. The gang leader began with a smile. Your food will be here in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'll return this handbill. You dropped it, Patch. I read it. What are you doing in Border City? The trains don't cross the border. Oh, I see. You came here by train. You went across the border. You saw the handbill. You think I'm safe in the States? No, Patch. But on the other hand, you can't cross the border. Oh, why not? The whole border district is heavily patrolled by government agents looking for gun runners. They'd stop you and question you. They undoubtedly have reports on all men who are wanted by the law. Oh, I didn't expect that. Patch, if you pay my price, I'll get you safely out of the country. What's your price? I want two men killed. That should be easy for you. I recognize at least six gunslingers in the cafe. These are very important men, and their deaths will make a big noise. All of my men, my friends, must have ironclad alibis so there'll be no suspicion that I'm connected to the murders. Oh? The killer will have to leave the States for good. You must do that anyway, so you have nothing to lose. Who's to be killed? A banker named George Wilson and the Lone Ranger. What? The uh, Lone Ranger? Is he around here? Yes, he's in Wilson's home. Kill those two and I'll guarantee you safe passage to Mexico. How? Oh, by bribing the border patrol? No, by means of an underground tunnel. It's dry now, but it was once the bed of an underground river. It runs under the border and opens into a hidden ravine in Mexico, about half a mile from the border. Few people know of its existence. Where is the opening on this side of the border? And you see it in due time. After the shooting, come here as quickly as possible. Come to this office, to the side door, without being seen through going through the cafe. You mean to say you get to the tunnel from this office? You'll see tomorrow night. Meanwhile, stay in my hotel next door. Do you want me to wait until tomorrow night? Yes. I'll arrange a party in honor of the men of the Border Patrol. All of my friends and associates will be here, as well as the men from the Border Patrol camp who are off duty. Giving you a number of federal men as alibi witness for your uh, friends. Exactly. Just uh, one thing, Ringo. Well? I want to study the situation in advance. I'd like to look over Wilson's house and grounds tonight. I'll have Mace and Tripp take you there. <coughs> While you're reading, I'll see if they've recovered. <laughs> While alone in the office with his meal, the disguised Lone Ranger quickly adjusted his plans to the startling new development. He penciled a note of instructions for Tonto. 
and it was in his pocket when Ringo returned to the office. Face and trip are ready when you are. During the short walk to the estate of George Wilson, just beyond the edge of town, Tripp and Mace were sullen and spoke only when necessary. They kept the man they knew as Patch between them while he studied the lighted house from all sides then moved to the door of the dark stable. I want to look inside the stable. What for? To see if the white stallion or the lone ranger is there. All right. Come on. In the stable, the lone ranger struck a match. The flickering light revealed Silver, Scout, and several other horses. That's the lone ranger's horse. The one in the next door belongs to his Indian partner. Uh, Ringo was right. The lone ranger is here. The match burned out, and the lone ranger moved fast in the darkness. He slipped the note from his pocket and left it where Toto would be sure to find it in the morning. You ready to go back to the cafe? Yeah, let's go. The following evening, Ringo played host. All of his men and a number of invited townsmen were in the cafe to honor the border patrol. Presently, Ringo excused himself, hurried to his office, and closed the door. He unlocked his private door, and a moment later, the Lone Ranger, still posing as Patch, walked in from the alley. Yeah, right on time. I like that. Ready to go? Yeah. I'll need my gun. Right here. You sure you'll be able to get into Wilson's house? No doubt of it. I'll be back here in half an hour. I'll be here in the office. Meanwhile, I'll make myself conspicuous in the cafe. In the cafe, Ringo covered his nervous tension with forced laughter. <laughs> That's the best joke of the evening, Captain. <laughs> Tell us another one, will you? He kept close track of time, and soon he once again hurried to his office. Seated at his desk, he watched the clock. The man known as Patch had been gone 30 minutes. 31. And then... Ringo, where's the escape tunnel? Calm down. What's in that bundle? My clothes. You promised to show me the tunnel. Where is it? I still have bullets in this gun, Ringo. You try to double-cross me. I'll, I'll show you the tunnel, but tell me how things went. I got into the house, fired one shot, and a lot of federal agents rushed into the room. Federals? I couldn't fight all of them. I ran. Did they see you? Of course. They're chasing me. Well, I'm well ahead of them. You blundering fool. Show me that tunnel. Those men will come here. They'll question me. You're in the clear unless they find me. If they do, I'll swear you sent me to kill Wilson and the Lone Ranger. I'll get you out of here, but I'd rather kill you. Don't try it. I'm armed. The entrance to the tunnel is behind these bookshelves. Don't swing out like this. Very clever. Go down the steps. You'll find a lantern. Just keep going straight ahead. Right. Now wait. Did you kill the Lone Ranger? Ask the federal men what happened. Ringo didn't dare wait longer. He closed the secret door. And the bookshelves were no sooner back in place than the side door opened. Five men came in. Mr. Wilson. Yes, Ringo. I think you know these men. They're special agents for the government. Yes, we've met. Are you men here to search my place again? If so, I trust you have a search warrant. Ringo, we're looking for a man who we think came here. A man you sent to my house. I have no idea what you're talking about. You tried to hire a killer. Wilson, I'm getting tired of your accusations. You've tried to prove I deal in stolen army goods, that I'm a gun runner, a smuggler. Now you accuse me of hiring a killer. Look, the bookcase is moving. Hold well, it, Ringo, you're covered. I'll take your gun. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stand wait. still, Ringo. This is it, Ringo. Ask. Who Did you find what we wanted? Yes, Wilson. Yeah, fine. In that tunnel, there are cases of army guns and ammunition, as well as papers and some records that should convict the whole gang. Moreover, the tunnel goes all the way to Mexico, crossing in under the border. That does it. You, that voice, you are the eye patch. Yes, and now he's wearing a mask. He tricked me. I'll kill you with bare hands. Ringo. Thanks, Ringo. Oh. Wow. Well, you cooled him in a hurry. Did I hear you say thanks? Yes, I'd hoped for the chance to give him a little of the stain that Mason Tripp got. I'll handcuff him while he's unconscious. Well, Jim, the captain and men of the Border Patrol are waiting for word to arrest the hoodlums in the cafe. Yeah, that'll be easy. All the guns except those of the federal men are checked at the door. I'll go and tell the captain to get busy. By the way, one of Ringo's men stole Tonto's gun. We'll get it back for him. Now you have it. Ringo must have admired it, because it's the one he was carrying. Then this gun I took from Ringo belongs to your friend? Yes. Well, then take it to him. Here. Oh, thanks. Tonto is waiting in the alley with your horse. I'll go to him now, George. Mr. Wilson and Tonto told us about you, sir. We're proud to have had a hand in helping smash the Ringo gang. Tonto and I are proud to have helped you, government men. Howdy. Goodbye. 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 Wilson, in 24 hours, that masked man accomplished more than we could in the past six months. <laughs> well... That's the Lone Ranger. Until the 
The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.